Pero ano ba ang expansion? So sabi sa dictionary, ang expansion po is the increase of something in size, in number, or importance. Expansion can also mean the action of becoming larger or extensive. Expansion is synonymous to growth, enlargement, extension, development, spread, and increase. Expansion is when a small thing becomes a big thing. Amen? So church, do we want expansion in our lives? Ay, parang mahina eh. Do we want expansion in our life? Amen. Amen. Dapat ganyan yung energy. declare natin yan kasi yan yung word natin for this quarter. Well, not only this quarter, pero sa buhay natin, we want expansion, right? So yun. Expansion. <laughs> Sorry po. So, again, we want expansion in our lives. And just like what our other preachers have already said, uulitin ko lang po, that expansion requires resources. Diba, pag when we are renovating or building a house, building a, a building, we would need resources. We would need an adequate budget. We would need adequate space. We would need construction materials and many more. But not only that, expansion also requires effort. It requires hard work because expansion could mean demolition, construction, innovation, which is to tear down, to install new things, to create new things. It becomes a series of doing this and doing that. Expansion is resources. Expansion is doing the work. And because of that, expansion could be costly. Merong cost ang expansion. It could be even complex. It could be tiring and demanding process. Sa mga nagtatrabaho dito, di ba? Hindi ka man nagtatrabaho sa construction, but you know that in, in every expansion sa business, sa building, sa kahit anong bagay, it is very tiring and demanding. But you know what? Even if it's tiring and demanding, it could also be rewarding and beneficial in the long run. Kaya, kaya, kaya hindi, lang siya natin, hindi lang natin gusto ng expansion, but we need expansion. Kailangan natin ng expansion. Hindi lang siya want, but it is also a need. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. So yun, that's why our title for this morning is Beat to Beat. Diba? Sa English po kasi yung mga, there are certain words that has different meanings. And that is this one. Beat to beat. Ano po ba ang first meaning ng beat? Yung mahaba. <laughs> diba? Beat. Sabi doon, it is an adjective meaning extremely exhausted. At kanina tinanong ko po kayo, may pinagdadaanan ba kayo? And every time na may pinagdadaanan tayo, di ba nakakapagod? Pero sabi dito, to beat. To beat. A verb meaning to defeat, to conquer, to win against, to overpower. Kanina declare na ating worship leader, di ba, that we are overcomers. And is it because of us? No. It's because of the God with us. So yun, again, expansion can make us beat. It can make us feel extremely exhausted. You know that, but then, it's not an end story when you're beat, right? There can always be a chance for you to beat something. It doesn't have to stop with just, pagod na ako eh, ayoko na. Diba? But the question is, are we willing, church? Are we willing, fam? Are we willing, friends? To cross over from being beaten to beating something. Amen? 
Are we willing to cross over from being just extremely tired, stagnant, defeated, to being wide awake, to be moving forward, and to be victorious? It says in Isaiah 54, verse 2, paulit-ulit na natin to pinag-uusapan. Sabi, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. Enlarge. We have to have a bigger vision. We have to have a bigger plan than what we see now. Kaya church, Meron ka bang dream? Meron ka bang vision? Sinulat mo na ba yun? Stretch your curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Let's stretch ourselves out. Make an effort. Let's go outside our comfort zones. Let's break the limits and go beyond. We have to act upon our vision and our dreams. Hindi pwedeng, hmm, yan ko na si Lord. Di ba, minsan ganun tayo. Yan ko na si Lord. Pero hindi, we have an act, we have a role to play. Sabi rin sa verse, strengthen your stakes. And what are stakes? Hindi po yung pagkain, ha? <laughs> Pero stakes are pegs. So it says in the dictionary that it is a pointed piece of wood or other material driven into the ground as a marker or support. And why do we need to strengthen our stakes? Kasi sinabi na, enlarge your tent, stretch your curtains wide. But why do we need to strengthen the stakes, the, the pegs? Because we don't want that what we build will eventually come to a ruin. Alam mo yun, nag-effort ka, nagtrabaho ka, tapos biglang guguhu lang pala. That's why that is important. We have to strengthen them because we want na kapag bumagyo, na kapag may shaking, it will still last. Amen? Amen? And how do we strengthen those pegs? Diba? We beat them with a mullet or a hammer or a rock into the ground. Di talaga ididil din yung ganon, di ba? And alam niyo what, what I realized while I was meditating on that, on that, ano, on that illustration na kailangan mong pukpukin, na in life, kailangan pala talaga yung hirap. In life, kailangan palang dumaan sa sakit. In life, kailangan palang dumaan sa beating. Para ba masaktan lang? No! We need the beating because it needs to stay. It needs to be rooted. It needs to be more steady and anchored. Kaya kung may pinagtataanan tayo sa life, okay lang yan. Hindi okay at the moment. Pero, it is a learning ground. It's a stepping stone. It's something that will strengthen you over and over and over again. Kailangan masaktan. Kailangan mahirapan. And just like this person in the Bible whom God has given a dream. Mahilig po ba kayo sa kwento? Mahilig ba tayo sa kwento? So ngayon, magkikwento ulit ako. Ako yung resident, ano, taga-kwento dito. <laughs> Di ba? Pag madal-dal ka, kwent- makwento ka. <laughs> but anyway, so yun nga. Just like this person in the Bible whom God has given a dream. He was given a dream so big that made his brothers hate him. That made his brothers want to kill him. But instead, they sold him and they left him in the hands of slavery and tried to forget that he even existed. Para tayo Sunday school, no? Kailala ba natin yun? That's right. It's Joseph. Pero yun, if it wasn't painful enough, did that person suffering end there? That he was hated, he was sold? Did 
that person suffering and that did Joseph suffering end there? No, it was actually the start of more. But did Joseph stop with his suffering? No. He kept going and going and going and going and going until he reached the dream that God has given him from the very beginning. The dream of new levels, the dream of greater things, the dream of expansion. And do we want to learn from the story of Joseph? Amen? Amen. So let's dig into the story of Joseph the dreamer, which can be found in Genesis chapter 37 to 50. So hindi ko babasahin yung buong chapters because that's a lot of chapters. But I would really love if all of us, young and old, would really meditate it on their time. Kasi I believe that all of us would relate to the story of Joseph. Why? Because his story was a series of ups and downs. And no, we agree that we, we have that life na parang, Oh, kakataas lang, bahuba na ulit, tataas ulit, bahuba. Di ba? Ganun ang life. Pero, again, let's just go on to the story of Joseph. So sabi po dito, Joseph was the son of Jacob and Rachel and he had 11 brothers. Malaki po silang pamilya, no? Sabi sa Genesis 37 verses 3 to 4, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So favorite si Joseph. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph. A beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to them. So alam mo yun, favorite ka ng, per- ng tatay mo, pero hindi ka bet ng mga kapatid mo. <laughs> Diba? So yun, but not only this father favor him more than his siblings, Joseph also had dreams. And it's not a kind of dreams na, oh, I want to be like this when I grow up. Oh, I want this when I grow up. Hindi po ganon. Ito po yung dreams na nare-receive niya sa Panginoon kapag natutulog siya. Diba? So yun, his dreams, and his dreams weren't just simple dreams. Hindi lang po simple yung napanaginipan ni Joseph. It's a kind of dreams that were kind of interpreted as that his family will one day bow down to him. So syempre, di mo na nga bet si Joseph kasi siya ang favorite. Tapos, meron ka pang dreams na parang sinasabi mo na, Ay, one day, magpa-bow down kayo sa harap ko. So yon, they were enraged. The brothers were enraged. So they plotted to kill him. But eventually, sabi nilang ganyan. Or one of the siblings said, ben, ano, patatakasin niya na lang si Joseph. Pero yung mga kapatid niya, he sold him to, an, to Ishmaelite traders. And after that, Joseph was taken by the Ishmaelite traders to Egypt. And then he was traded or he was sold again to Potiphar, an official of Pharaoh. And while serving in Potiphar's household, sabi sa verse, chapter, Genesis chapter 39 verses 2 to 4, the Lord so, nasa Egypt na siya, na kay Potiphar's household na siya. And sabi, the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he, di- he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar, so he made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household, and everything he owned. But was it the end? Maganda na yung story eh, no? Yung parang, sana doon na lang. Okay na siya eh, di ba? Um, 
pinagkatiwalaan na siya. He, he was given a okay na boss. ba? Diba? Pero hindi eh. Pogi kasi si Joseph eh. Kasalanan to dahil pogi siya. So taas yung mga kamay ng pogi dyan. <laughs> ba? Diba? Pag pogi. ba? Diba? Marami talaga problema pag pogi. Charot. Pero yun nga. But because Joseph is good looking. <laughs> diba? Dahil pogi. Dahil guwapo si Joseph. Potiphar's wife. Yung wife ng boss niya began to look at Joseph lustfully. She wanted Joseph to sleep with him. But Joseph refused her many times. Diba? So sabi dito, Joseph refused, looked, he told her. My master trusts me with everything in this entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has, be- he has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. So si Joseph, hindi lang guapo. Bait ba- ba- pa, <laughs> di ba? May ganun. <laughs> Eh, yung mga tao sa church, yung mga, mga men's natin, do, di ba dapat ganon? Pogi na. Faithful pa. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, yun. Oh, pogi daw is presence of God inside. <laughs> Oo. So, yun. But Potiphar's wife was persistent. Gusto niya talaga. In sleeping with Joseph, and one day when no one was around, she grabbed him. But Joseph ran away from her. Ito yung literal na habulin. <laughs> diba? But unfortunately, unfortunately, he left his cloak behind and false, and she falsely accused of trying to seduce her, and Joseph was thrown into prison. Pogi lang, nakulong pa. Diba? Kasi ayo he, he she the the wife was refused many times. So, sabi niya na lang, he raped me kahit hindi naman. But even in the prison doors, Joseph found favor. He became the warden's favorite. Sabi dito in verse 22, before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and other and over everything that happened in the prison. So instead of him being just a prison, parang nag-work na siya doon, parang guard na rin siya, di ba? Kasi you, you were trusted. So yon, Joseph was in charge again, and one morning, he saw one of his, one, um, two of his fellow inmates, a cupbearer and a baker, both upset, and he asked why. They said they had... They both had dreams, and they didn't know what it mean. So Joseph, being able to interpret the dreams, interpreted the dreams for them. Kasi meron nga siyang kakahayahan na i-interpret yung dreams na meron, yung mga kasama niya sa prison. So he knew that the cupbearers would be restored, so he told him, Please, please. Remember me and do me a favor with the thing when things go well for you. Mention me to the Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was just kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison. But I did nothing to deserve it. Dino man siya nakidnap, di ba? Binenta siya. Pero yun na lang yung sinabi ni Joseph. But did the cupbearer remember Joseph? Ito'y nakakalungkot. Sabi sa verse 23, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. 
yung ginawa mo, in-interpret mo yung dreams niya, nung nagkatotoo, nakalimutan ka na. ba? Diba? Minsan, ganun yung nangyayari sa atin eh. No, binigay mo lahat, kinalimutan ka na. So, ganun din yung nangyayari kay Joseph. Pero nag-give up ba si Joseph? No. He didn't give up. He didn't rebel against anything. He stayed put. And it took two full years for him to be remembered by the cup bearer. Two years. Na dapat nabulungan na, di ba? Pero it took two years for him to be remembered again. Sabi dito, nawala na. And it was then, when Pharaoh had dreamt twice and no one could interpret his dreams that the cupbearer said, there was a young Hebrew man with us in the prison who was a slave of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he told us each of our dreams, what, what each of our dreams meant and everything ju- happened just as he had predicted. So Pharaoh Dahil nababagabag na siya sa kanyang dream. Pinatawag niya agad si Joseph. Sabi niya, Can you, this is, these are my dreams. Can you interpret it for me? And Joseph was able to interpret the dreams. And hindi lang nag-interpret si Joseph, nag-suggest din siya na mga pwede, niyang, pwede nilang gawin. So, when Joseph interpreted his dreams, the Pharaoh was impressed with Joseph's interpretation that he made him second in command over all of Egypt. Sabi dito sa verse 39, Since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on the on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Wow. <laughs> from prison doors to the palace. Where can you get such a story? Where can you see such a story? From prison doors to the palace. So Pharaoh's dream came through. (laughs) True. Pharaoh's dream came through. There came the famine. So his brothers had to travel from Canaan to Egypt to buy food. And then was, and it was then when Joseph, dream in the beginning also flashed before his eyes. Diba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, merong dreams si Joseph. Dalawang dreams that one day his brothers will bow down before him. And this is what happened in Genesis chapter 42 verse 6. Since Joseph was governor of all Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all of the people, it was to him that his brothers came. And when they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. His dreams happened before him. And did Joseph immediately hug them and reunited with them? No, he acted as if he didn't know them. He even plotted a plan so he can accuse them of stealing something so that he can take Benjamin, the youngest. But you know what happened? His brothers confessed what they had done before with Joseph and begged him that they wouldn't want them to suffer the same thing over again. That they were filled with remorse with what they did. And Joseph, being Joseph, 
he revealed his identity and forgave his brothers and brought his entire family to Egypt. And they were given land and provisions. Naintindihan po ba natin yung story, ha? Amen. Was the story of Joseph of new level, of greater heights, of expansion easy? Madali ba yung story ni Joseph? Madali ba yung pinagdaanan ni Joseph? No, right? It wasn't easy. It was not. It took him many years of suffering before he could finally reach or receive what God has placed in his heart, in his mind. It took a lot of years of suffering, of dealing of betrayal, of dealing with being alone, of dealing with uncertainty. And tayo, may pinagdadaanan din tayo, di ba? We, have, we are suffering, hindi man, I don't know if every day, every other week, pero we are going through sufferings, right? But do you know what strengthened Joseph all throughout this journey of expansion? Do you know how he strengthened his stakes or how we can strengthen ours too? I'll give you four points. With the same title. Number one, B. Believe in God and His dream for you. Ulitin ko po. B. Believe in God and His dream for you. Actually, dream, dreams. Pwede rin po yun. So Joseph believed in God and in the dreams that God has given him. From beginning to the end of His confidence with God never wavered. He believed that whatever God has placed in his heart, it will come to pass. And church, are we like that? Na pag may nilagay ang Lord sa puso natin, naniniwala tayo, we have the confidence that what he said will come to pass. Sabi nga po sa Philippians 1.6, And I believe that many of us have this life verse that sabi dito, And I am certain that God who begun the good work within you, within us, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Uulitin ko po, and I am certain, and we have to be certain that God who begun the good work within us, You, within me, within us, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. And you know what, church? I don't know what God has placed in your heart. Hindi ako manghuhula na, ano kaya yung plinase ng Lord kay Seth, kay Lucas? I don't know. Di ba? I don't know what God has placed in your heart. It may just be a dream that you receive when you're fast asleep, just like Joseph's, but, but it can also be the passions, the gifts, the skills, the talents, the experiences, the circumstances, and the list can go on and on and on. God is putting something in your life in your heart, but what is that? Alam nyo, there are no accidents with the Lord. Kung nasaan po tayo ngayon, kung ano pinagdadaanan natin, wala pong aksidente sa Panginoon. There are no accidents with the Lord. There is a reason for, every, for everything that we have or have experienced. Kasi sabi nga sa Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, there is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heavens. Again, I don't know what God has placed in your heart. It's between you and God. Kaya importante po na nagsispend tayo ng time sa Lord. Kasi hindi natin, hindi natin makukuha o hindi natin marireceive yung plano o yung, yung word niya sa atin kung hindi po tayo 
nagko-commune with God. It's between you and God. Kasi even with Joseph li- Joseph's life, he had dreams, right? Sinare niya pa yung dreams niya. Sabi niya, ito yung mga uh, dreams ko. I had a dream. Ganon. Pero naniwala ba yung mga kapatid niya? No, right? Even his parents did not. He was ridiculed with his dreams. Nagalit yung mga tao dahil sa dreams niya. Pero nangyari ba yung dreams niya? Yes, right? Kasi hindi naman tao ang gumawa ng pangarap mo. O hindi naman tao ang nagplano ng buhay mo. Pero si Lord. And... In church, <laughs> for us to strengthen our stakes, we have to believe. We have to trust in God in what He already did in, her, in our lives, what He is still doing right now, and what He will still do in our lives. Number two, letter E. To strengthen our stakes, we have to endure. We have to keep going. Sabi po sa James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 in the New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will perfect you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And it's a isa pong translation pa in NIRV. Sabi po dito, my brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of troubles. But when you do, think of it as pure joy. Your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. And sabi po dito, and you must allow the strength to finish its work. Then you will be all you should be. Uulitin ko. And then you will be all that you should be. You will have everything that you need. Ano sinabi dito? Our faith will be tested, but let your endurance grow. Kasi when you have that endurance, when you have that strength in you, you will be all that you should be. We all are a work in progress, are we? Right? We all are a work in progress. But that's why it is important that when our faith in God, our dreams, our vision is tested, na kapag may winds, storms, shakings, and battles in our lives, hindi lang tayo magigive up. Hindi na lang tayo magsa-stop na ayoko na mag-effort. Ayoko na, na hindi na lang tayo mangangarap or bigla na lang tayong susuko or bibitaw. But it says here, let your endurance grow so that when it is fully developed, we will lack nothing. We will have everything we need. We will be able to withstand everything that comes our way. Endurance cannot be developed, cannot be learned if we stop. Right? But it's okay to pause. <laughs> it's okay to rest. But it is important that we, that as we pause, that as we rest, we do it with God. You know why? Because when we have God, we will still have the heart and the fire to continue. Kasi pag wala tayong Diyos, saan tayo pupulutin, di ba? 
So guys, let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Let's keep pursuing the path that is set before us. To strengthen our stakes, endurance is equally important as faith. Kasi sabi nga po, faith and actions work together. Hindi ko po na ilagay dyan. Pero sabi dito in James chapter 2, verse 22, you see, faith and his, ha- and his actions work together. His action made his faith complete. And in James chapter 2, verses 26, in God's Word translation, it says, A body that doesn't breathe is dead. In the same way, faith that does nothing is dead. Ulitin ko po. In the same way, faith, faith that does not, that does nothing, <laughs> na, nabubulol na ako, that does nothing, kung ang faith natin walang ginagawa, it's still dead. And number three, point three, to strengthen our stakes, we have to affect our surroundings. Ano po ba ang meaning ng affect? Affect means to produce a change in something. And do you guys agree that we all have the power to influence? Some may be more influential than others. Let's, let's agree, right? But we all have the power to influence. The question is, where are we using our influence? Uulitin ko, we all have the power to influence people, things, everything around us. But where are we using our influence? Sa story po ni Joseph, he was a foreigner to the land of Egypt. He was from Canaan, right? And he was just sold and was put to Egypt. He was a teenager. Sabi sa Bible, 17 years old lang daw si Joseph nun. Which we could assume that he may not have the experience or the qualifications for the job. But he was excellent in everything that he did. And he always put and he was always put in charge of many affairs. Wal- walang qualifications. Diba? Walang ano. Wala siyang past experience. He was tending the flock. Pero how did Joseph manage to be the best in what he is doing? Paano naging the best si Joseph sa ginagawa niya? Joseph lived a set apart life. Uulitin ko. Joseph lived a set apart life. He wasn't conformed to the standards and the culture of this world. Hindi niya ginawa kung ano yung mga ginagawa ng mundo. And bakit ko, na, bakit ko nasabi yun? The normal response for everything that he has went through is to sulk. Right? To, to be sad, to be depressed. And that's what we're seeing right now, right? In this day and the generation right now. That when we're going through something, ayoko na, suko na ako. And hindi po natin hinuhusgahan yung mga ganun. Kasi hindi natin alam yung depth talaga ng pinagdadaanan ng bawat isa, right? Pero tayo bilang mga Kristiyano, Tinawag tayo ng Panginoon. We are called by God to make a difference, to make an impact, to influence other people. So just like Joseph, we are called to live our lives differently. We are called to live our lives against the flow, against the status quo. To break what the world tries to normalize. Sabi sa Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. 
a town built on a city on a hill ca that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good, de good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Church, we are made to shine. We are made to be the light. We are made to be a walking testament of Jesus existing and living. Diba? Kaya, tayong mga Kristiyano, we have to live as if si Jesus lang yung makikita talaga. Hindi as if pala, na si Jesus lang yung makikita. Kasi lahat ng mga tao, paglabas natin sa labas ng simbahan na to, nakatingin kung sino ka. Namumuhay ka ba talaga bilang kristyano? Are you living like a Christian? We are His representatives in this world. And it has to show. Dapat makita ng mga tao na may Jesus tayo sa buhay natin. Because when people see how God has been moving in our lives, they will be encouraged. They will be empowered to journey with Jesus too. Right? Kapag sabi nilang ganyan, uy, yung bait nito oh. Di ba? Sa mga testimonies ng mga ating mga titas, mommies. Di ba? Yung mga kawork nila. Sinasabi, oh, uh, pag-pray mo nga ako. And with that, we are encouraging people to, to have a relationship with God. Kaya, church, kung nasaan man ba tayo, nakikita ba na kristyano tayo? Kung hindi, hindi pa huli ang lahat. <laughs> Di ba? So, point number three is to affect your surroundings. So that when you have affected, when you have influenced other people, we will, and people will come to Christ, and as a church, as a family of believers, as a community, we will be stronger. And our last point, may I call on the worship team? And lastly, for us to strengthen our stakes, number four, we have to testify. Uulitin ko. For us to strengthen our stakes, we have to testify. There is a power in declaration. There is power in declaring what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do in our lives. Why? Because testimonies act as a reminder that whatever may come our way, God is God. God is God. That He is faithful, that He is good, and that He is in control. Throughout Joseph's story, he didn't forget God. All the more, he made sure that the people knew that He is with God and that God is with him. That whatever gifts, skills, talents, interpretation, it didn't come from him, but it all came from God. Sabi niya pa nga dito sa Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, But as for you, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about at, as it is this day. To save many people alive. Or in other translation, it says, in order to save the lives of many people just as he's doing today. Church, your testimonies act as a reminder of God's faithfulness to you. But do you know that your testimony doesn't just impact you 
hindi lang ikaw yung natatouch ng, ng testimony mo, but the people around you. And as the youth pastor of this church, your testimony does not just impact the older people, but more so the younger generation. Why? Kasi nung nagsimula po ako sa YWAP, wala naman po akong relationship with God. I didn't have any relationship with God. But because of hearing my mentors, my leaders, my pastors say, this is what God did to me. This is what God will do. This is what God is. Or who is. I embrace who He is. Nakilala ko po si Lord dahil din sa mga testimonies ng ibang tao. Kaya yung mga tumatayo po dito, bigyan po natin sila ng clap offering. Kasi testimonies are needed in the church. It is needed in our conversations, in our families, in our schools. Testimonies are needed. We have to show, we have to let people know what God did already and what God will do. Ipakalakala natin si Jesus ng paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit, at paulit-ulit. So ang sasabihin ko lang, Church, expansion is more than just resources. Expansion is more than just hard work. Expansion is heart work. Uulitin ko. Expansion is heart work. Puso to puso. Diba? It's not enough that we have the material things. It's not enough that we have finances. It's not enough that we work hard every single time. It's not enough. Expansion requires faith. Expansion requires endurance. It requires change. It requires testimonies or celebrations. Every time something small or big happens, kailangan po natin, napagusto natin ang expansion sa buhay natin, willing tayo to go through the moments of strengthening. The moments where we feel like we are continuously beaten. The moments where we feel like we are carrying it all. And I would say, oh, nakakapagod. Oh, napakahirap. But we have to remember that suffering is not the end. There is a promise of expansion, of eternal life that is set before us. And eternal life is very limitless, unlimited. That is the kind of expansion that God wants us to receive. But church, are we ready to receive that? Are we ready? Are we willing to do the hard work? Are we ready to have the character building? Kasi, kahit saan ka pumunta, kailangan muna ng puso. Tama? I know heart is the most deceitful thing. Sabi po yun sa Bible. Pero kung ang puso natin naka-align sa puso ng Panginoon, we are able to do greater things. Amen? Again, we cannot do this alone. We need to align our hearts with the with the heart of God. Are we ready to do that? Amen. That's why the greatest way to be strengthened as a family, as a church, as a community, is to look at what Jesus already did on the cross. Yung pegs, yung nail, yung pegs po parang nails, di ba? It was continuously beaten to the hands of our Lord Jesus. But you know, that beating represents that, 
that putting on the nails on the cross represents is not death. It is life. It is life in abundance. It is life in expansion. Amen? And Jesus is our anchor. Jesus is our support. And we can only experience the abundance, the expansion, if we give it all to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Bago po natin katayin yung kanta na ito. And it is our victory. It is Jesus' victory on the cross that makes us who we are right now.